Take your Bibles and turn with me this morning to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. If you would please stand for the reading of God's Word if you're able to. John chapter 8. We've been preaching through the book of John. We've titled the series, Beholding His Glory. And boy, I tell you what, if you go through the, the book of John, you can see the glory of God. Amen. Amen. God's good, isn't He? Amen. All the time. All the time. Are you glad you're saved? Say amen. amen. Yeah, I just want to make sure you're awake this morning. All right. John chapter 8, and we'll begin reading in verse 28 here this morning. It says, then, Jesus, then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I do, all, do always those things that please Him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and, we never, and, we, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin... Is the servant of sin. The servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that Abraham's seed, uh, I know that you are of Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said, uh, saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This, is not, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then they said unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. And Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou, uh, thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? And Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and, and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, I, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that, ye, that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not fifty years old, and Hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was I, was I am. Then took up they stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Back in verse 32 will be our text that we'll take this morning. It says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'd like to preach a message I've titled, Truth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the truth of God's word. We thank you for the truth that opens our eyes and gives us understanding. We thank you for the truth of the gospel and how that it leads and guides us and, and, and led by the Holy Spirit of God into truth. 
Lord, I pray that you'd help us this morning. Lord, there is a, a great need of truth today in this world in which we live. Lord, I pray that you'd be with those, maybe this morning, that don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Lord, they don't know if they died today, they'd go to heaven. Lord, I pray that during the invitation that they'd come and let's take a Bible and show them how they can receive Jesus Christ as their Savior before it's eternally too late. And Lord, I pray for Christians, Lord, this morning in this, in this auditorium, Lord, that you would speak to their hearts, Lord, that you'd draw them to you. Help us to realize the need of getting the truth out, just even as Brother Davis uh, uh, preached and spoke on this morning during Sunday school, getting the truth out. And, and Lord, I pray now that you would strengthen us to do likewise. And Lord, I pray now that you'd be honored and glorified in all that's said and done in the service. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You be seated. I'd like to kind of focus on a issue or a rare commodity, to be honest with you, this morning. A rare commodity in our day and time. Truth. You know, there is, we look around us and, and, and a lot of people, they, they, they seem as though that truth is pretty fluid and they go back and forth with it and, and they make this truth and they make that truth and they don't have anything to stand on. And we live in day and time when we wonder, well, what is truth? And you listen to the media and you listen to the, those who, who say that they're giving you the truth and giving you the news and giving you the, uh, what is the latest that's happening. And they're, boy, they, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to sell it to you that they're giving you truth. And then next thing you know, the next day they change it and it's something else. And then the next day they change that and it's something else. And somebody else comes out with some other story and it's the truth. And this is the truth. And... And we live in day and time, you begin to wonder, who can you believe? What is the truth? What is the truth? And so we find that a lot of people today don't recognize the truth because we've not been around it very often. We find here that, the, that Jesus is speaking to the Jews and some of them believed on Him as the Savior, believed on Him as being the Messiah and received Him as Savior. Then you have those there that didn't, didn't uh, believe and they rejected Him. There's this struggle that goes on. Uh, they, they struggled with the truth. And, and same as it is today. The world is struggling with truth. Right. Many times around us as we present the truth, uh, people look at it and it's, and it's like a, a calf looking at a new gate. Wondering what's going on. Wondering what's happening. Wondering, I've never seen this before. It's kind of like a, a brother... Brother Davis, and when he, when, he was, when he got on, I thought, man, I'll tell you what, that had been a good illustration for my sermon this morning, talking about that, that man from Africa. When he seen that, he says, that's the, that's the truth. It's the truth. So pointing to the Bible. And, and boy, this morning, if you're sitting here and you got the Word of God sitting in your lap, do you realize that you hold in your hands the truth from God? Amen. Not from, the, not from the, the political realm, not from the, the newscasters, not from our higher Educational system, but from the highest of all, and that's the Lord Himself. We've got truth this morning. Yet so few know what truth is. In John chapter 18, when Jesus was speaking with Pilate uh, there and says, in verse 30 says, And Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou uh, a king then? And Jesus answered him, Thou sayest I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, uh, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And all around us today, I think there's a lot of folks saying, What's truth? What's really, what can you really believe? What, can, what never changes? What is real truth today? The fact is, as I said, we have the truth in God's Word. You have the agnostics that doubt truth. You have the rationalism that, that questions truth. You have the infidels that scoff at truth. You have the logic uh, people that dissect the truth. And you have the education, educational people who search for truth. But Jesus said, I am the truth. In John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the, the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hey, listen, around us you'll hear people say, well, there, I go to this church, I go to that church, I, I believe this, I believe that. And, hey, listen, there's only one way into heaven. And, and, and it's not, to, it's not to, uh, my way, and it's not uh, necessarily a Baptist way. It's not necessarily a, 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 a Methodist way. It is God's way. And that's the truth. And it never changes. Yeah. So many times we've got to realize that 
truth is so important in a, in a day and time when people are searching. And I think, Brother Dave, what's happening is when you, the people coming through the, those, those fairs many times that, they're, that, they're, that they are looking for truth. They're looking for some answers. They're looking for some truth. There's a lot of things going on. And, and boy, I tell you what, we need people to step up and, and stand for what's right and stand for truth. Stand for truth. Well, there's a lot of people who don't know what it is. Jesus is that truth. John 1 verse 14, he said, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ. The one that is the, the truth. The word of God is truth. In John 17, 17, he says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And as I said, you sit here and you hold the truth of God's word. Hey, there's no need for us not to understand what God wants in our lives. There's no need for us to say, I wonder if this is real. We hold in our hands the word of God, breathed by God, and man penned it, uh, the truth of God's word. Sanctified, set apart. Separate and built up by truth. The truth of God's word is what we're needing today. Yet today, the greatest famine in this world is truth. The greatest famine that there is is of truth. Every time you pick up a paper, every time you turn on a radio, every time you look at a TV, every time you look at the internet, uh, you know, they, 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 they tell you, well, it's got to be true. It was on the internet. Whew. Whew. Boy, if anything is wrong, it's probably the internet. Amen? That's right. yes. There's a famine for real truth. So, so few really know Jesus Christ. Many know that about Him, but don't really know Him. Or even His Word. Many are looking for a substitute in our day and time for truth. And I think that's what's happening all around us. That we think that we can just say anything and it becomes truth. And people are looking for that substitute of God's truth. Yet there's no substitute for the truth of God. There's no substitute for true salvation. There's no substitute for God's word. There's no substitute for Jesus Christ and his blood atonement for our sins at Calvary. Man doesn't like the strength of the truth and doesn't want it to abide by it or live by it, the truth. Therefore, they look to, for that substitute of truth. Mendel once said, he said, everything can be imitated except the truth. Everything can be copied and imitated except for real truth. The world tries to come up with an imitation of God's Word, and they can't. The world tries to come up with an imitation of, of how you can go to heaven, and they can't. A wor the world tries to come up with an imitation of how you can have real joy, even through difficulties of, uh, of, of illness and death and struggles in your family and struggles at your work, and they can't. The world tries to come up with a way to, to put a real peace in your heart and life when the, when the world is in turmoil to put a real peace in your heart. And they can't do it. They can't imitate because the only thing that can bring real peace and real joy is truth. Jesus Christ in your heart and life. You can face tomorrow because of Jesus Christ. That's real truth. Because you know that it's never changing. You see, there's... So many times there's that need to get back to the, the blessed book of the truth. And Jeremiah 6, 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Hey, listen, we need to get back to this book. I know they say, Well, preacher, it's outdated. No, it's not outdated. It's very much up to date. It still tells us what's going to happen tomorrow. It still has the answers to every problem that you got. It still has the answers to peace and joy. It still has the answers to eternal life. It still has the answers of, of when, when the problems come in your life and you're down. It can still guide you and direct your life and give you a joy and lift you up when you're down and put your feeding on a solid rock and direct your going and cause you to, to, to have joy in, 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 the, in, the, in the, 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 the trials of life. Hey, listen, it's very much up to date. Right. You say, well, preacher, it's not politically correct. And neither is truth. That's right. I don't want to be politically correct. Brother Davis, I want to be biblically correct. 
We need to stand on God's Word, the truth of God's Word. Because truth is what is needed today and get back to, back to some solid foundations. Everything I said has become fluid back and forth and back and forth. Do you believe this side? Do you believe that side? Do you believe this? Do you believe? Hey, listen, get into the Word of God and find out what truth is in the situation. You say, well, preacher, what about our day and time? What does the Bible say about that? The Bible says a lot about our day and time. It points us to the return of Jesus Christ. It talks about in the last days, there should be perilous times. Men should become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. It goes on and talks about there'll be a great falling away. And that's talking about Christians departing. It's, it's, it's a picture. It's, it's probably the greatest picture snapshot of what's going on in our day and time. Proving that it's truth. Hey, listen. We're living a day and time when we need some truth to back in our Back in our homes, back in our, in our churches, back in our, 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 our government. back in, We need the truth of God's Word. We need revival. We need a revival of the preaching of God's book. The truth of God's Word. Jesus Christ. You see, that ab, there's that absence today. In the hearts of man all around us, there's the absence of truth. They listen, uh, just listen to their... Excuse me, just listen to their talk, listen, look at their lives, the way that they're living, look at the turmoil that they're in, look at that there's no truth, there's no Savior, there's no, no presence of the Word of God, there's no peace. Hey, listen, there's a need of, of getting back to the Word of God. You see, an absence of, even today, of that truth in our nation. Why, as a nation, are we in such turmoil? There's always that outside fringe. And, I, and, I, and you can say what you want. You can say that it is just a political battle. But it is not a political battle going on in our nation, folks. It is a spiritual battle. Amen. That has moved into that realm. And that's why there is no truth coming out of much of the political realm anymore. That's why the news media, you can't believe most of the time what they say. Because they're twisting it. Why are they twisting it? Well, don't they love America? They don't understand that there is a, that there is a right and that there's a wrong. Yeah. And they don't understand that there's a true way of living for God. And Hey, listen, this, this nation, folks, this nation was, was founded upon the Word of God. That's right. was found, is it perfect? No. It never was, never will be. But my friend, I want you to understand, it's still the greatest nation on earth. And God still wants America to, to do what is right and to see righteousness. The Bible says, it says, righteousness exalteth a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. We need to get back to the truth of righteousness. Hey, listen, we need, we need and, and I'm just going to say this. I, I, you know, you can say what you want to. I, I'm, I'm glad Curtis is, is, is running state representative. But I'm going to be honest, tell that he stays with truth. <laughs> like we ought to be on every one of our representatives and senators to stay with truth right. and do right. I appreciate young people who have a vision to, to bring America back to truth. Yeah. We need that in this day and time. <laughs> We need a vision of bringing the church back to truth. We need a vision of bringing our homes back to truth. We need a vision of, of, of seeing revival across this land and, and, and lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. There's that absence in most of the pulpits even today. Preachers having become hirelings instead of standing for right and, and preaching uh, as Isaiah said in Isaiah 58 in verse 1, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression in the, in the house of Jacob their sins. We're afraid to preach against sin in this day and time. That's right. We need truth. Sometimes the truth, as they, we've heard this before, the truth hurts. But we need the truth. We need the truth. You know, you go to the doctor and, and uh, I remember when I was in the seventh grade, I, uh, 
getting ready for the basketball season. I played basketball, and I remember my brother's uh, birthday was in is in October, and we was we've been practicing basketball at school, and I and man, I I, I was looking forward to that year, and, and I thought I possibly had a good shot at a place on the starting five, and and boy, we was playing, and one day we had a birthday party for him, and and he was couple years older than me, and then we had another fellow that lived out in the area. We lived out in the country, came over, and some other people there, and we was playing some basketball, and I was the littlest one, and, and I was the youngest one, and I jumped up to take a jump shot, and this boy, one of our neighbor boys, he just thought it would be funny to, to uh, block the, the little kid. Well, he hit me with his body, and I fell backwards, and I got through my arm back like that, and when I got up, it looked like this. Got to the doctor. He, you know what he said? It's broke. <laughs> yep. But then he said something else. It's going to hurt. <laughs> he took a hold of this part of my arm. He took a hold of this part of my hand like that if they had x-rayed it. He begins to pull it and set it. Said, didn't they give you any shot back then? No, they give us a leather strap to bite on. And... No. We were tough back then. <clears throat> Honestly, they didn't give me anything for the pain at the time. They just set the arm, and that took care of the pain. You know, sometimes the truth, when he said it's going to hurt, he wasn't kidding. But as soon as the truth had taken over and he said it, the pain was gone. You know, sometimes the truth hurts in our lives. Sometimes as a Christian, the truth tells us that we are, have drifted from God. Sometimes the truth tells us, hey, listen, you're not living like you ought to be living. Sometimes the truth tells us, hey, that's sin that you got in your life. And, and if you want to serve me, you've got to get rid of the sin. That's what's, what the truth does to us, and it hurts sometimes because we look at some of that sin in our lives. It's become a, a, uh, a habit. It's become a pet, and we've, we've, ha we've hung on to it so long, and yet it, it's, it's almost like uh, it's got to be uh, surgically removed from us. And the Lord says, you've got to get rid of it. The truth that helps set us free. But it'll set you free from the bondage, and sometimes the truth hurts, and sometimes... As a person, we look at it and the truth says, you know what? You've been going to church all your life. You may have even been through the baptistry. You might have even prayed a little prayer. But you're not really saved. And the truth hurts. See, I remember when I was young, going forward in a, in a service and they said I got saved. I just went forward because a bunch of other people went forward and nobody really dealt with me and and uh, never really shared the gospel, plan of salvation. It was in a, in a church that they really didn't do that. When I was a, in high school, boy, I'll tell you what, the Lord really began to deal with my heart, and I knew I was lost. And I had friends and a girlfriend that, at that time, and, and uh, I had hair back then. And <clears throat> we sit back in, in the church and... and Lord's doing my heart, and I wouldn't go forward because of my friends. And the truth kept working on my heart until a point where was, I got up that Wednesday night, middle of May of 1975, went forward and received Christ my Savior. And here's what I said. I'm not dying and going to hell for nobody. And the truth set me free. Well, right. I'll tell you what, sometimes the truth hurts a little bit. But all the results is so wonderful. John the Baptist's message from the wilderness wasn't smile, God loves you. It was, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath of wrath to come. Jeremiah was not was not put in, in into a miry pit for preaching, I'm okay, you're okay. Right. It was for crying against the adultery and idolatry and other wickedness of the nation. Noah's message from the steps of the ark was not something good is going to happen to you. But he condemned the world and was a preacher of the righteousness. 
Jesus Christ was not crucified for saying, Consider the lilies, how they grow. But for saying, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, children of hell, fools and blind, blind guides, uh, whited sepulchers and generation of vipers. As he delivered the truth. And oh, how we need to realize the truth is needed today. In the absence of truth, uh, there's an absence of truth in our modern thinking today. Dismissing God's word as it is uh, 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 changing to fit our wicked lives. We want to be soothed. We want a band-aid to make us feel good. We want to change the truth into a lie. Romans chapter 1 speaks of our day plainly. Romans chapter 1 verse 25 says, Who have changed the truth of God into a lie. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And we're living a day and time where we have turned from God and we've, we've looked at self and it's all about us now instead of about God. It's all about what I want instead of what God wants. It's all about me and what I can get instead of what I can do for somebody else. It's all about what, what happens in my life instead of what's happening in somebody else's life for eternity. And we've changed the truth of God's word into a lie. And people today, you'll talk to them many times about the Lord and say, oh, would, if he's such a loving God, he wouldn't send anybody to hell. He doesn't. You make that choice yourself. They call truth a lie. In Isaiah 5 and verse 20, the Lord uh, inspired Isaiah to write, He said, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. We live in a day and time where people are, are taking that which is good and calling it bad. We, got, we live in a day and time when they're taking that which is bad and calling it good. They're taking that which is, which is right and calling it wrong. Well, look around and listen to the media and what they're saying. You can have, you know, all this stuff that it just, it, it influences lives in so many ways that they're saying, oh, that's, that's wrong. You don't live that way. And, and, and here, uh, this, this wicked lifestyle is, is good and it's right and you was born that way. That's a lie. We need to get back to the Bible. We say, well, preacher, how do you know you wasn't born that way? How do you know? Because God created man out of the dust of the earth. He formed him out of clay. And he breathed life into him. And he became a living soul. Yeah. And he called him man. And then one day, after he'd been naming the animals, there wasn't anybody for Adam. He didn't breathe into the ground again. He took a bone. He took a rib out of Adam, put him to sleep, took that rib, and he made woman. Say, so how did he do that? He could do whatever he wanted to. Target wasn't around. There was no such a thing as a neutral gender. God created man and he created woman. And he created man and woman that they might exist together. Not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve. He said, Preacher, you're going to make somebody mad. I'm trying. <laughs> but the world will have you to believe that at birth that you can't call them a boy or a girl folks I'm going to tell you something I had biology in most of my school I was Actually preparing to, I wanted to be a surgeon. But God closed the doors on that. I'm going to tell you something. I know a little bit about biology. And when they're born, it's not hard to tell. <laughs> but the world will say, 
oh, you, you can't say that they're a boy or they're a girl until they get older and then they decide what they're going to be. Lest I get going here, I'm just going to say, that's a lie. Amen. And we've got to get back to truth. Back to truth. This world wants you to believe a lie and, and be cast out and into outer darkness. Modern man's pattern for determining truth goes uh, something like this. How do you feel about it? And that's how we determine truth. The devil's a liar and, and he tries to change truth to, to, to cause the lost to go to hell and the Christian to live in sin and mess up their life and their testimony. In John 8 there, look at verse 43. It says, and Why do ye not understand my speech even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Whoa. And abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Through down through the ages, Satan has tried to do away with truth. Do away with the truth of who God is. Do away with the truth from, from what God said. Do away with God's word. You say, when did he start? In the garden. When he was talking to Eve, what did he say? Yea, hath God said. And he begins to lie and put doubt into, into man's uh, minds and hearts. And boy, what we need to do is we got to get back to the truth and back to the word of God. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't be listening to the lies of Satan. You see, only the truth can set you free. Verse 32 in John 8 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see, only Jesus Christ, who is truth, can save your soul, set you free from death, hell, and the grave, and put real joy in your heart. Yeah. You're sold under bondage to sin and Satan, and, and you're, you're destined to eternity in a lake of fire, but only the truth of, of Jesus Christ and His shed blood can set you free. In John 14, 6, as Jesus saith unto Him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. That truth is the one that will set you free. Amen. Only the truth of God's Word, Christian, can set you free from that bondage of sin in your life that is holding you back from serving God. In verse 31, it says, And Jesus said to those Jews which believed on Him, If ye continue in My Word, the truth... Continue in my word. Then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We need to obey the truth of God's word. We need to follow him. We need to follow the, the blessings of God and, and follow after that. How we need to turn the truth and follow and obey him. You see, the most dangerous fault in a person's life is a lack of interest in truth. Say, preacher, well, if they don't want the truth, then there's nothing you can do for them. <coughs> Only God can get them to want the truth then. But you know how you get them to want the truth? We live the truth. And let them see the truth in our lives. We share the truth and let them hear the truth. That will make a difference in their lives. Heard an old farmer say, you know that old saying about you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink? He said, I can change that. Somebody said, you can't make them drink. He said, oh, sure I can. He said, you put a little salt in their oats. That's right. He said, I guarantee you, they'll want to drink. You want, the Bible calls you and I, we're to be the salt. If we're salt and light, show them what Jesus Christ has done in our lives and let them know the joy that you got. Let them know the change has been made in your life. Let them know that, hey, listen, man, this is the greatest life I, I could ever live. Is that for Jesus Christ? I'll tell you what, that salt will make them thirsty for what you got. You say, how do you know, preacher? Because that's how I got saved. 
I went to church. I tried to obey my parents. I tried to obey all the authority. Listen, I'm from a time when, when you didn't argue with the teacher. The teacher was always right, even if the teacher was wrong. And when you got home, if you got a whipping, you got it double at home. And you could say, well, the teacher treated me this way or that way. Do you know what? My mom and dad believe the teacher. You say, oh, that's terrible. Probably ruins you. Well, yeah, look at me. Probably ain't got hair today because of it. We need to get back to truth. We need to cause people to see and desire the truth of God's word. This morning, the truth is this. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have no hope for eternity. Because without Jesus Christ... You have made a choice for eternity. So oh, I haven't made that choice. Oh, yes, you have. A lack of not choosing is an is a, is a act of choosing. And you have chosen to reject Christ and to receive hell. But you know what? God loved you so much. He sent his son that you might have eternal life. But God commenced his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Somebody had to die for sin. That's the truth. Somebody's got to die for sin. And the truth is, Jesus did. But will you receive him as your Savior? Christian, I, I tell you what, and especially those that heard this morning, I appreciate what Brother Dave's done and how he's pushing us to, to tell others about Christ, we are so needful of getting the truth out to the lost world. Amen. They need it. The world needs Christ. Let's bow. Father, we thank you for loving us. Thank you for the mercies of God. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word, that Jesus Christ is truth, and in him is no lie. Father, we thank you that we can turn to you at all times and you're always the same. The same yesterday, today, and forever. You're unchanging because you're truth. This world is continually changing because it's living a lie. And they look for another lie to cover the last lie. Lord, they're in a turmoil. Lord, the answer is Jesus Christ. The truth. Have your will and way in this invitation. This morning, maybe Christians need to come and say, Lord, help me to get the word of God out. Help me to get truth out. We're living in these last days. And Lord, I pray that this morning, if there's somebody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ, their Savior, help them to understand. Holy Spirit, deal with them to realize that except they receive Christ, their Savior, they'll spend eternity in a lake of fire. Help them to realize how much you love them, Lord, and that you want them to receive the truth. May they come this morning and let us take the Bible and show them truth that they might have eternal life. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand. But Brian, what are we going to sing?